Hey y'all, I was just poking around in Reactor the other day and I found something that I hadn't messed with before. I found this mod clipper. And so, well, let's click on this and we'll have a look at the description real quick. Clipping modulator. The input signal is clipped to the level of the modulation input signal. Okay, so we can run audio into this and then control how we clip it. Again, since it's a modulation input, we assume that it's going to have some sort of change over time. In and of itself, nothing groundbreaking here, but what's interesting about this is it reminded me of a few weeks ago, I was looking for a Eurorack envelope generator and I came across the noise engineering Synclastic Empulatrix. I hope I'm saying that right. This module discontinued, but apparently it was an envelope generator and VCA that did just that. So usually when we have an amplitude envelope, the envelope affects the amplitude of the signal, decreasing the signal as the envelope gets lower. In this case, as the envelope and the VCA gets lower, it clips off the waveform. Why do this? Well, apparently this is how the envelopes worked on the symbols of the old 808 drum machine. And as we know, clipping is gonna add some harmonic. If this isn't quite clear yet, as always, what's gonna make it more clear is us building it ourselves. So let's get started. What I'm gonna do is I really wanna emphasize the clipping that's happening here. So let's start with a sine wave oscillator. Let's give it our usual controls, except let's not quite go our usual controls. Let's, instead of putting our gate in there, Let's put in a one there. Now, if I run this to the output, be prepared. Okay, we got, I probably have some sub audio going on right now that I can hear, I can. I heard a click there. Okay, I just hit note number 60 and now we've got note number 60 going. Because I have no amplitude controls, that's gonna go forever. All right, goodbye. Let's take this output, run it into the input of our mod clipper, and then I know recently I just went over a ton of different envelope possibilities, but let's just keep it simple and we'll use an AR envelope. Here, we put in our gate. Troll, troll. I'll probably put that in a macro at some point, but here we are, attack release. Now check this out. Now, you can probably hear that that doesn't quite sound like a sine wave. Let's jump over, let's add our scope bank and see exactly what's happening here. Oh, it's kind of square-ish. Here, let's take our sine wave and let's turn this down to 0 0.5. So, do you see what's happening? So as the envelope comes up, let me make it real slow. When we get to top amplitude of that mod clipper, when this has gone up to the gate level, which is probably, I think it's 0 0.7, someone told me in one of the comments. When we get to the top, it's no longer clipping. And as that envelope is coming up and down, rather than just turning up and down the volume, it clips it. Let me do a quick demonstration comparing it to how we would normally do things. So normally we would take that envelope, multiply it by this sine wave, and let's give ourselves a switch. We'll call this clip. Call this norm. We'll call this VCA the switch, right? Okay, now think, think, think. And over panel. Flip. And here's how it would normally function, right? Now, of course, I could do an ADSR, I could do any type of envelope here, but just using the AR here to start out with. 
Okay, let's let's do something slightly more interesting here. Actually, I said slightly more interesting, but I might start with something less interesting. Here, let's put in a pulse wave here. What do you think is going to happen? The clip on there seems to have a slightly louder amplitude. I have to think for a second about why that is, but um, uh, because it's a square wave, because the waveform is already squared off at the top, this actually isn't all that interesting, okay? We know with our sine wave, we immediately heard all those extra harmonics that the clipping was adding on the release. Let's try a sawtooth. Sawtooth already has a bunch of harmonics, but it's still changing the waveform on it. This is the clip version. Normal. You can sort of hear that squarishness of that coming through. What that means, that squarishness means it might be, in this case, squares have the odd harmonics and sawtooths have all of the harmonics. So probably what's happening is we're losing those even harmonics as the envelope fades in and out. Again, another interesting thing to induce some change over time. Just as a last step, we don't even need to do this, but why wouldn't we see what happens if we filter, right? So as we know, when we filter, we filter out harmonics. Let's do the, just the two-pole filter, I think. Once again, if I were doing this as a proper ensemble, this filter and my envelope would probably be in macros, but we're just doing a demonstration today. Here we go. Oops, I set that up in a really silly way. Put my cutoff on the bottom. Let's do this instead. All the more reason to use macros. There we go. Normal. Hopefully this is interesting. Again, more ways to get dynamic sounds over time, taking inspiration from the symbols on the Roland TR 808 drum machine. Again, this is an intentional distortion of sound, a distortion of sound that only happens on the attack and release of it, but maybe a neat way to add a little bit of character to your synths. We'll leave it there for today. Let me know what you come up with. Bye. Uh -huh.